So in today's video, we're going to talk about round tripping into Photoshop from Lightroom and talk about some of the important settings that you need to take note of uh, before you start editing in Photoshop. So let's jump into it. So before we start editing inside of Photoshop, we need to check some of the really important settings before we take the time to edit any photos inside of Photoshop. So the first set of settings is going to happen inside of Lightroom. Let me show you what those are. The first thing we're going to do is go up to edit and then go to our preferences. And then we're going to go over here to this tab that says external editing. This shows us the types of settings that anything we export out of Lightroom into another program such as Photoshop, what settings that file is going to have. Here in the top portion, you can see that this says edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. That means that this section is going to have to do with anything that goes into Photoshop. If you had another program such as like uh, Nick Color Effects Pro, stuff like that, that's going to happen down in this second, this additional section. But for this, we're just going to talk about Photoshop. So I prefer to edit in TIFF. You can either choose TIFF or PSD. Not a huge amount of difference. I think that there might be a file size difference or a max file size difference. I believe, don't quote me on this, you can only have a two gigabyte file as a PSD, but with a TIFF file, you can go up to four gigabytes. I think that's why I use TIFF, but regardless, they're very similar. The next one is going to be probably our most important setting. That is going to be color space. A lot of times by default, it'll either have Adobe RGB or sRGB selected. Color space is kind of confusing for some, but essentially it's, it's the size of the space that we're working in. sRGB, let's say is this big. sRGB is a smaller color space, meaning that we have fewer gradations between colors. Then Adobe RGB is quite a bit larger than that. And then Pro Photo RGB is the largest color space we have available to us. Basically, all you need to know is that the larger the color space that we're editing in, the more gradations our photos can have when we go to print. So if you're somebody that plans on printing, always work inside Pro Photo. That's going to give you the most color gradation, color variation uh, that you can have. It doesn't affect the way you view the image or the way you see the image, but it does give us far more color information and gives the printer far more color information. You can always take away later on, let's say when you're exporting for the web, but you can never add it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So we want to start off working in the widest color space possible, and then we can restrict that later on when we're going to upload for the web. So we want to make sure that this is set to Pro Photo RGB. We always want to have our bit depth set to 16 rather than 8. And I prefer to have my resolution at 300. A lot of times that'll be set to 240, I believe. But I always increase that to 300. Doesn't change a lot. And then compression, you have a choice between none and zip. I always select zip just because it keeps file size down a little bit. And now I'm just going to hit OK. Now, before we round trip anything over into Photoshop, let's jump over to Photoshop and change its settings to match what we've just done. So we're going to open up Photoshop. I'm going to go up to edit, and then I'm going to go down to color settings. It gives us this pop up here, and this is what it's going to be oftentimes by default. When we go down to working space in the RGB tab, it's set to sRGB. Remember, that's a smaller color space. So if we were to edit, open a photo from Lightroom up inside of Photoshop, it would be throwing away some of that information that we have in our file. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Pro Photo, where are you? Pro Photo RGB. And that's going to give us a larger color space to work within. I leave everything else as it was. The other stuff is basically just dealing with the gamma gray scales. Honestly, it's a little bit over my head. I just go by what people recommend. But the most important thing is to switch our RGB working space to Pro Photo. So now we're ready to open this photo up inside of Photoshop. And we have a couple different options for that. If I right click on our photo, it can either be down here in our timeline or up here in our preview. If I right click and then go to edit in, we have two different ways to open this photo up inside of Photoshop. We can open it up as a smart object in Photoshop, 
or we can edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. Anytime that you're processing just a single photo, I always highly recommend opening it up as a smart object. Let me show you why. So I've opened this photo up two different ways, once as a smart object, once not as a smart object. This version is as a smart object, and we can tell that because there's this tiny little symbol on our thumbnail down here. And if we go over to the other version of the photo, you can see that it just says background and there's no little icon on our thumbnail. The cool part of opening up anything as a smart object in Photoshop is that we still have access to this raw file. If I just double click this, it takes us into Adobe Camera Raw and we have all of our different settings that we applied over inside of Lightroom. We can go back and reaccess that raw file and tweak anything that we've already done. Nothing is ever baked in, nothing is permanent. This is a very non-destructive way of working and is really great if you don't want to lock yourself into, let's say a particular white balance or some of the base edits that you did over in Lightroom. Another cool thing that I like to do is I will do what's called dual processing, where I will actually duplicate this smart object. I'll just right click and select new smart object via copy. And then I can process the second one for our sky area. So you can see our sky is getting a little over bright. We can darken it down, remove some contrast, remove some sharpening, add a little noise reduction. And then using layer mass, I can actually blend this version of our photo in with the other version of our photo and process it twice which is called dual processing. And because it's a smart object, if I decide that this didn't blend well with itself, I can just double click on the smart object, open it back up and do whatever I need to do to make it work better. Nothing is ever locked in, nothing is ever permanent because we still have access to those original raw files. Now, if we go over to the other version of our photo and I double click on this layer, nothing happens. We don't have access to the, the raw file data anymore. I can open this up inside Adobe Camera Raw, but because this is a TIFF file, we don't have the amount of color flexibility that we had with the raw file. So there's a lot of benefit to opening st stuff up as a smart object. I highly recommend it because it's a non-destructive workflow. Okay, so now let's say that we've fully processed this shot, which we obviously haven't, but let's just say that we have and the time comes to save it. All we really have to do is to hit Control S or Command S, and it's going to save this file. And the cool thing is that because it came from Photoshop or because it came from Lightroom, if we go back over into our Lightroom catalog, it's going to save this file that we've just processed right back in the same folder and right next to the files that it came from. That way it's round tripped. It's went back into Lightroom and it's gonna be nicely organized where, it, where the photo originally came from. So for example, it's right here next to the source files. We have our raw files and then we also have our TIFF file right here, which is going to be our finished version. It's going to be our master file. And then when the time comes that maybe we wanna reprocess this shot or somebody orders a print of it, all I have to do is right click on this photo on our master file and go to edit in Photoshop CC. Then it's gonna ask us, do we want to edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments or do we wanna edit the original? And if we select original, it's going to open up that master file and we're still gonna have all of our layers available to us here. Nothing is permanent, nothing is baked in and we can always go back to that master file. So that's the really cool part about round tripping is you start off in Lightroom, you do some base adjustments, you open it up in Photoshop, you do all of the edits that you're gonna do. Maybe you're somebody that's new to Photoshop and you just want to you know, clone out or do some content or fill stuff to a particular area because it's more powerful inside of Photoshop. Then you save, it goes back over into Lightroom and maybe you polish it up there. Maybe you're just using Lightroom just for the cataloging aspect like I do. So my personal workflow is I import into Lightroom, I organize and I catalog inside of Lightroom. I go through and make my selections. I do some very basic raw adjustments and then I open up inside of Photoshop. I do the majority of my edits. I will sharpen and export for the web from Photoshop. And then I will save my master file, which goes right back over into Lightroom. And that way I can always easily find my photo when the time comes to either 
maybe print it or to reprocess it. It's always going to be right there in right next to the source files that that original photo came from. It's going to be a master file. It's going to have all of our layers there, but it's going to be really easy to find and right there next to the photos that it came from. Okay, so this is just a little video about round tripping from Lightroom into Photoshop. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like these videos, make sure you subscribe, ring the little, ring the little bell so you're notified when I release new videos. And we'll see you in the next video. Hope this helps. Take it easy, everybody.